Right, this is how to set yourself up for the kettlebell swing, for the movement, okay? So you're going to take a stick, a dowel rod, and they don't have them in this gym, so I've got a window pole, okay? It doesn't matter what it is, just as long as it's straight. So you're going to put the stick over your back like this. So you're going to, you've got a lumbar curve here, so you're holding it in there, like that. And then you just hold this stick up here, kind of like you've got your cervical curve here on your neck, and you can hold it there. So you want the back of your head, between your shoulder blades and your tailbone, touching the stick, okay? And then what you're going to do, stand with your feet shoulder width apart, okay? Push your hips back, and bend your knees slightly until you're in this position, okay? So what's happening here is my back is still in the same position, okay? Tailbone, middle of my shoulder blades, head. So what you'll see a lot of people do is lean forwards like that, right? That is now not touching my tailbone, it's miles away. So the difference there is that. So that's leaning forwards, and then I push my hips back, look, and then I'm in a nice straight line. So as you'll see, my back doesn't change position. So there's no load going through my back at all. It doesn't change position, okay? Another common thing you'll see people do is bend their knees first and do that. Again, that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for our hips as we go back, our hips to be above the knees and below the shoulders, okay? That is a hinge. That is a squat. So my hips are now below my knees, okay? So we're not gonna get much force out of that for a kettlebell swing. So for a kettlebell swing, it's a hinge, which is back like that. So you'll feel it in your hamstrings, okay?